All right, so let's add and subtract some fractions. Um, so just like if you were adding and subtracting fractions with just numbers, you need a common denominator. And there are different ways of finding that. And so I tried one way already. So let's try it a different way. So when you have variables involved, it's probably easier just to list all the facts that you have. So that's the denominator. Well, the only factor that x has is x. The second denominator is y. So it's the only denominator or factor that that one has is a y. And then when I look at this, this is where my common denominator comes from. So I'm going to circle all the parts that I need. Well, my common denominator needs an x. That looks bad. And it needs one y. And so my common denominator is x times y. Put that underneath here. And then let's go see what you have. So this one has an x. Okay. So if I'm looking here, it has an x, so that means it needs a y. So over here, you multiply by y over y. When I look at the second denominator, it has a y, so it has this y, but that means it needs an x still. So you multiply by x over x. And then you do 2 times y plus 1 times x. And then that would be the single fraction that you have as a result. So that was a fairly straightforward example. So let's look at one where I made it a little bit more difficult. I'm going to do the same things. Okay, I'm going to list the factors for both of the denominators. So 3x has as its factors a 3 and an x. 15y has as its factors a 3, a 5, and a y. So let's make a common denominator. I need one 3. I need one x. You need one 3, but you already have that. You need one 5, so you still need a 5. And you need one y. Okay, so all of the factors are now represented in the common denominator. You multiply it out, 3 times 5 is 15, and then x times y. So your common denominator for this one is going to be 15xy. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look in, in the individual fractions and see what I already have. So this one has a 3, so I don't need that one. It has an x, so I don't need this one. But that means that it does need a 5 and a y. So on this fraction, I'll have to multiply by... 5y over 5y. Let's look at the second one. <clears throat> it has a 15, and keep in mind that a 15 is a 3 and a 5. So it has a 3 and a 5 already. It also has a y. So the only thing that this particular denominator needs here is it needs an x. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by x over x. And then you just multiply it out. So 5 times 2 is 10y plus 1 times x is x. And then that would be the fraction that you end up with as a result. Okay, so let's do one more example. So I made it, I'm going to make it again a little bit more difficult. But you'll see the process is just going to be the same. It's just going to take me a little longer to do it now. So each of the factors, okay? So this denominator has a factor of a 3, or sorry, a 3x has as its factors 3 and x. 15, x squared y has as its factors 3, 5, x squared, so two x's and a y. And then 2 is over 1, so it doesn't really have any factors at all. Okay, I mean technically 1, 
but uh, we usually don't consider one as a factor because three could be three times one and 15 could be three times five times one. So you can sort of leave that one out of consideration for your common denominator. So the common denominator needs all of the factors. It needs one three, it needs one x, it needs one three, got that, it needs one five, nope, don't have that yet, it needs one x, have that, it needs a second x, so you need one more x, and it needs one y. So your common denominator here will be 3 times 5 is 15, x times x is x squared, and then you get a y. So here, if I make my fraction now, the common denominator is going to be 15 x squared y. Let's look at the parts we're missing. So for the 3x, you have a 3 and an x, so I have a 3 and an x. What do you still need? You need a 5, an x, and a y. So I'm going to multiply this one by 5xy over 5xy. Second denominator. 15x <clears throat> squared y has a 3, an x, I mean sorry, a 3 and a 5. So 3 and a 5. It has two x's and it has one y. So that one doesn't need anything at all. So you can leave that. And then the last one, the 2, only has a 1. That means it needs all of these. So you're going to multiply that one by 15x squared y over 15x squared y. And you multiply it up. So 2 times 5 is 10xy. Copy the symbol here. That's a negative. Minus 1. You're not doing anything to the top here. Plus 2 times 15 is 30 x squared y. And then that is the final fraction. Thanks.